Welcome everyone. For today's prep, we're gonna look at the limit comparison test, and we're gonna see how we can use this to tell when a series is convergent or divergent. And as the name suggests, we're gonna have a series, sigma an, that we don't know anything about. We don't know if it converges or diverges. And the idea behind this test is we're gonna compare it to another series, which we do know something about. So we're gonna have a second series that we're gonna consider as well. Um, and for the purposes of the, the, the wording of this test here, we're gonna call this sigma bn. So we have two series, one we know something about, one we don't know. And well, let's read through what this test says. So we have these two series. And in order for us to use this test, there's a necessary condition, and that is they have to have positive terms. And actually, we can relax that a little bit. It's okay if the first few terms, there's some negatives in there, as long as it's eventually all the terms become positive. So... You know, we have our sequence, our list of terms. It's okay if a, a few at the beginning are negative, as long as we hit a point in the list where after that, they're all positive. All right, so that's the necessary condition and for, for us to just kind of check, make sure um, before we use this test. And so the actual meat of the test here is that we calculate the limit of a n divided by b n as n goes to infinity. And if we calculate that limit and we end up with a finite number c, and that finite number is greater than zero, well then both series either converge or they both diverge. So they do the same thing. So what this test says is that if sigma bn converges, and we've calculated the limit and found that the limit was a finite positive number, if sigma bn converges, then sigma an, the one we don't know anything about, converges as well. And if sigma bn diverges, well then sigma an, again, does the same thing. So it has the same behavior, it diverges as well. All right, <clears throat> so how are we gonna use this test? Well, we first need to come up with a series that we're gonna compare it to. And the comparable series that we're always gonna be referring back, usually referring back to, is either a geometric series or a P-series. So we just wanna remember, geometric series, these are kind of the, the exponential ones. These have a number r raised to the power n, or n minus one, depending on our, our starting index. And these converge when the absolute value of r is less than 1. And then they diverge when the absolute value of r is greater than or equal to 1. And then we also have our p-series. So these are kind of like the power functions. So we have 1 over n raised to the power p. And these diverge when p is less than or equal to 1. And they converge when p is greater than 1. So we're going to be coming back to those kind of those basic forms here. So... Let's look at an example. We're going to use the limit comparison test to determine if this series is convergent or divergent. So our series here is 1 over 3 raised to the power n minus 1, and we're doing the summation from n equals 1 to infinity. And when we're trying to use a limit comparison test, and we'll see that there's another comparison test called the, the direct comparison test. Um, the first step is to really come up with a comparable series. So this is not quite a geometric series because we have this exponential function kind of here, but then we also have this minus one. So it's not quite a geometric series. So the first step is we actually want to come up with a comparable series. Something that we know something about, a series that we know something about, and it's you know similar to the, the series we're going to be testing. 
And in general, the way we do this is we look at our fraction. Usually we're dealing with series that have fractions. And we take the dominant term in the numerator and the dominant term in the denominator. So in this case, there's only one term in the numerator. So we're going to use that. And the biggest kind of the, the dominant term in the denominator is that 3 raised to the power n. So we're going to form a, we're going to write down our comparable series. And this is going to be 1 over 3 raised to the power n. So it's related to our original series. But our original series, and let's just give this a name. This is sigma a n. Our original series is not quite a geometric series because of that minus 1. But this one is. So this is a geometric series. And the R value is one third. And we know that when the R value is, when the absolute value of that is less than one, it's convergent. All right, so that's the first thing. We need to come up with a comparable series. And we do that by looking at the dominant terms usually. And then once we have our comparable series, we just want to say, is it convergent or divergent, and usually give some kind of reason. So in this case, it's a geometric series with r equal to one-third, makes it convergent. All right, so now we're going to check our necessary conditions. Well, there's really only one here. And that is, are the terms of our two series po positive? And they are. So we just want to make sure we just state that. So 1 over 3 to the n, 3 to the n is always positive. So 1 over 3 to the n, no matter what n is, those terms are always positive. And the only kind of ambiguity here is we do have a little bit of subtraction for sigma a n. But when n is equal to 1, we're kind of starting off with a 3 there. And we have 3 minus 1 which is a positive 2, and then it gets it, it stays positive. So th the exponential is just kind of big here. So this term, even though we have this minus 1, this is clearly all has positive terms. All right, so we just want to state the necessary condition here, that our two series all have positive terms. And then once we do that, we want to calculate our limit. So we're going to look at the limit as n goes to infinity of a n over b n. And when we calculate this limit, we're going to be working with, we're going to be working with a lot of fractions when we do series. A lot of our series are going to have fractions in them. So it's usually helpful. Let's kind of rewrite this a little bit. So I'm just kind of breaking apart that fraction just a little bit. So we have a n times 1 over b n. And let's fill in what a n is. So a n is just the terms from our original series. So we're going to have that original fraction, 1 over 3 raised to the n minus 1. OK. And then right next door, we're going to put 1 over b n. So bn is this fraction 1 over 3 raised to the power n. So this is the reciprocal. So we're going to put the reciprocal of bn right next door. So we're going to have 3 raised to the power n over 1. And then we can... Combine those into a single fraction. All right. So it's usually helpful to do this. 
So that way you don't have kind of fractions stacked up, stacked on top of fractions. This way we only have kind of one fraction to contend with once we, once we clean it up. Um, all right, so we want to calculate this limit. And, you know, we have a few options. So as n goes to infinity, this exponential term goes to infinity. This exponential minus 1 goes to infinity as well. So this is an infinity over infinity form. So if we wanted to, we could use L'Hopital's rule. Um, or we could take a more algebraic approach. So yeah, let's, let's try the algebraic approach. So we can look at the dominant term in the denominator, which is the, the exponential. And then we can just divide every single term by that dominant term. So we end up with 3 raised to the power n over 3 raised to the power n. 3 raised to the power n over 3n, 3 raised to the power n. And then minus 1 over 3 raised to the power n. Doing the limit as n goes to infinity. And if we simplify that, we have the limit of 1 over 1 minus 1 over 3 raised to the power n. And we're doing the limit as n goes to infinity. And finally, this 1 over 3 raised to the power n there, that's a c over infinity form. And c over infinity forms go to 0. So when we calculate this limit, the limit ends up being 1 over 1 minus 0, which is just 1. So the value of 1 here, this tells us that because this number is finite and bigger than 0, so it's not, we didn't, we, we calculated this limit and it wasn't infinity, we actually got a number, and it's greater than 0. So we need this limit value to be greater than 0 in order for this test to, to, to work. So now we can just state our conclusion. So our conclusion here is that the series sigma a n, which we said was, well, it was just our original series, 1 over 3 to the n minus 1 from n equals 1 to infinity converges by the limit comparison test. And we just want to state the name of the test that we used. So what did we do here? We had to first figure out this comparable series, and we had to figure out if it was convergent or divergent. So in this case, we found that it was a convergent geometric series. Then we checked the necessary conditions. We calculated the, the limit of a n over b n, found that we got a finite number. And then what the limit comparison test tells us is our two series, the one we're trying to figure out, and our comparable one, they have to do the same thing. So since sigma bn converged, that meant automatically that our original series has to converge as well. All right, so this is the idea behind the limit comparison test. So we'll, we'll try another example out in class, and then we'll also be looking at the direct comparison test. So we'll see you then. Bye-bye.